you should be able to fully describe the results of mixing a weak base with a strong acid. You should be able to write the chemical equation and you should be able to predict um, what is in the final solution and what the pH of that final solution is. Here's an example. Write the chemical reaction and calculate the pH when a 0.1 molar solution of ammonia is mixed with a 0.1 molar solution of hydrochloric acid. We're going to assume here that we mix equal equal volumes. Assume that we mix e assume that we mix equal volumes. And let's just uh, say we're mixing one liter of each, just to make the calculations a little easier. Um, now, before we actually do the calculation to uh, determine the pH of this resulting solution, you ought to be able to um, predict whether or not that resulting solution should be neutral, basic, or acidic. And this is how you do that. You look at what's given here, and in this case we have, um, we have let's see, ammonia, and you need to recognize that ammonia is a weak base. So we have an aqueous solution of ammonia that's being mixed with an aqueous solution of hydrochloric acid. And you need to recognize that hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. When you mix an acid with a base, such as this, you end up producing um, in solution a salt plus water. So it's aqueous. Okay? And I know that because in solution, in a solution of ammonia, if I'm thinking like a chemist, I know that the ammonia, because it's a weak base, is also producing a very, very small amount of the ammonium ion and the hydroxide anion. Very small amount. It's, a, it's an equilibrium, and it's, it's a very small amount because the equilibrium constant is very small. When I put HCl in water, it's a strong acid, so I know that it's existing completely as the um, ionized uh, hydronium ion and chloride anion. Okay. So when I mix all of that together in solution, my result is this reaction is driven to completion because the hydroxide anion uh, reacts readily with the hydronium ion. That equilibrium lies far to the right, to the water side. So all the hydroxide that's produced is immediately going to react with the hydronium to give water. And that's going to drive this uh, equilibrium by taking out the product is going to keep driving this equilibrium to the right, according to Le Chatelier's principle. So I'm going to continue to form the ammonium ion, which is just going to exist um, in solution with the chloride anion. So that's what I'm going to end up with. And in this particular case, if you add equal molar amounts of this weak base and the strong acid, the reaction will drive to completion and you'll be left with the salt and water in solution. Okay, so given this is what's left in solution, I know water you know, auto ionizes to a very, very limited extent, so I'll just leave it as water. And then a chloride ion, it, since it's um, the partner to a strong acid, the anion of a strong acid, it is just exists as a spectator. It does not react with water to form um, HCl. It's just a spectator ion. But the ammonium ion, because it's the conjugate, uh, conjugate acid partner of the weak base ammonia, will ionize to a limited extent. So the equilibrium that we are concerned about in this solution is the equilibrium of the ammonium ion in water, which will react to a, a slight extent to give ammonia plus um, the hydronium ion. Okay, And because this is the equilibrium that's dominating this, whoops, this particular solution, excuse me, um, this particular solution then uh, this is the equilibrium that's going to control the pH. And so because of that, since a small amount of hydronium ion will be pro um, produced by that ammonium, then I'm going to predict that this particular solution will be acidic. So all of that is the thinking that goes into place before we um, actually do the math to figure out the, um, the pH. Okay, so, so this is going to be uh, controlling the pH. I'm going to rewrite this equilibrium expression over here. And now I'm going to calculate precisely what that ammonium ion concentration, or excuse me, the hydronium ion concentration should be, which will tell me what the pH of this particular solution should be. Okay, so this is the, um, the um, <clears throat> of course, all of these things are aqueous. Uh, this, is the, this is the equilibrium that's controlling this particular 
um, situation. Liquid, aqueous, aqueous. All right, so we need to figure out the concentration of the hydronium ion at equilibrium to determine the pH of this particular solution. Now, in order to do that, we're going to have to set up a, a rice table and um, figure out the initial, final, and equilibrium concentration so we can set it uh, equal to the uh, equilibrium mass action expression. Now the question is what's the initial concentration of the ammonium ion? To figure that out we have to go back to uh, the neutralization equation which was um, ammonia plus HCl reacts to give the ammonium chloride ion it's all aqueous, uh, and so water is um, also here. So we go back to uh, what we started with, and what we started with was a 0.1 molar solution. So let's assume that we, um, like we said, that we we're going to be working with one liter of solution. So one liter of a 0.1 molar solution would be 0.1 mole of this plus 0.1 mole of that. Assume none of this to, to begin with. Since this reaction drives to completion because it's a neutralization equation, then I'm going to react away all 0.1 moles of my ammonia, and I'm going to react away all 0.1 moles of my HCl to end up with 0.1 moles of this particular um, salt. Now, if I said that I started with one liter of each of these solutions, one liter of this and one liter of this, then my resulting salt solution will be two liters. So to determine the concentration of the ammonium ion, the initial concentration of the ammonium ion in the solution, it's going to be the 0.1 moles that was produced divided by the volume, which is now 2 liters, and that concentration is uh, 0.05 molar. Okay, so that's my initial concentration, and I can um, <clears throat> now just assume that uh, it, it for this particular equilibrium, I can assume now that I have one mole of one liter of solution to do the pH calculation. Okay, so just assume you have one liter of solution, and it's 0.05 uh, molar concentration, so it's the same as 0.05 uh, moles, and um, you don't need to worry about the water. And we'll say that we started off with none of this and none of this, so the equilibrium is going to proceed a little bit to the right to pre um, since it's a one to one to one molar uh, ratio. For every bit of uh, ammonium ion that I uh, that reacts with the water, you end up producing um, the same amount of ammonia and hydronium. So that's why we can just do X, and then the equilibrium will just be uh, 0.05 minus X, X and X. So since I'm expressing these in terms of both moles and molar, because I'm assuming one liter, then I can write my um, Ka expression. It's going to equal um, the equilibrium concentration of the ammonia times the equilibrium concentration of the hydronium ion divided by the equilibrium concentration of the ammonium ion. Now, if I look up in a table for the Ka of the ammonium ion, I may have a hard time finding it because it is the conjugate acid partner of a common weak base, ammonia. But I can remember that Ka times Kb equals Kw for any conjugate acid base pair. The Ka is what I'm looking for, the ammonium ion. The Kb for ammonia is uh, in the table is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, a well-known value, equals 1 times 10 to the minus 14, which is the Kw at room temperature, which we're assuming we're at room temperature. Okay, and so from this I can um, calculate the Ka is going to be equal to um, 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 1.8 times 10 to the minus 14. 5, which equals for this ammonium ion, Ka is going to equal 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. Okay, so 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. Now, this is a very small uh, value, so because of that, I can ignore the uh, amount of ionized when I subtract it from the initial amount, so I can ignore that, which simplifies uh, the math quite a bit. And so I end up with the Ka equals x squared divided by 0 0.05, solving for x by multiplying uh, the uh, Ka by 0 0.05 and then taking the square root of both sides of the equation. Um, I, can, I get uh, that the x equals, let's see, x equals 5.3 times 10 to the negative sixth, okay? So I just solved for x. Now I need to ask myself, you know, what is x here? 
X is equal to the hydronium ion concentration <coughs> at equilibrium, okay? And so the question was, what is the, um, the pH for this particular situation? And um, the pH then is going to be uh, pH equals negative log of the hydronium ion concentration. So I can plug this number in, pH equals negative log of 5.3 times 10 to the negative sixth. So the pH in this case is going to equal 5.28. And as predicted, it is an acidic salt.